two ball clubs, one division. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Detroit Tigers. Live on 2K Sports. And here in Comerica Park, those beautiful fountains, a highlight of this great yard. Always great to play at home, and today the Tigers will be doing that. I'm Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crook with me, Major League Baseball, 2K Sports. The starting pitcher, Rick Porcello. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? The youngster, Rick Porcello, out on the mound, a young kid with quality stuff. The strikeout numbers aren't there yet because he's still learning how to use a sequence of pitches. But when he gets in trouble as a hitter, you have to look for that two-seam fastball. It's his bread-and-butter pitch. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. He's one of the more exciting players in baseball. Finally got moved to his more natural position, shortstop. And I tell you what, this is a guy that can excite you in a lot of ways. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. And he's not a big guy, but I tell you what, he can generate some power in that frame. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. White Sox winning last night. One game after another. They really do not seem stoppable right now. They're just piling up the W's. When you want to talk about a team that is white hot, these guys are world beaters right now. I can't remember the last time they lost a ball game. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. John, they are playing at a high level, uh, not only because of the W's, but because of the way they're. Here's one hit very well deep. And Rayburn didn't have a problem getting over there in time. Let's see how the Tigers line up on defense. Alexi. Are you keeping an eye on anyone? Brandon is one of the best athletes in the game today, Gary. He's bounced all around the field. He's been a shortstop. He's been a third baseman. He's been a catcher. But his athletic ability is what allows him to be solid defensively oh. at any position. Oh. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. He clearly had a shot at hitting for the cycle last time out. Got the triple, which is the top. Just hit the ball out of the ballpark for a home run. Got a single, but just lacked the double. Couldn't get it done. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching work. And Paul Canerco to bat. Base is empty with two up. And that's on the outside corner for a strike. Outstanding rotation on that pitch. Look at the mechanics for this pitcher. It comes out of his hand and just falls Ball off on. the table. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. Oh. One one pitch, slider, taken for a strike, one and two. Oh. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. Here's the pitch. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. And they go quietly offensively in this half inning. Nothing across. First chance for the. Mark Burley is going to be pitching. He gets settled in for Chicago. Johnny faces these Detroit hitters. Main objective? Well, don't blink your eye on this one because if you do, you're going to miss some pitches from Mark Burley, the quickest worker in all of baseball. When he gets it, he throws it. There's no wasted time. He has a low pitch count. He throws a fast. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. Went away. Sponsored by Pepsi, a chance to check out the Tigers' line. Scouting pick, John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, a big offensive force in the middle of this lineup. Magli Ordonez is a guy that, even though he struggled in 2009 with his power numbers, he gets on base, he hits for a high average, and he can produce runs. He's a guy you love to see up in key situations with the ability to go the other way. Let's see if he can take advantage of that here today. So, Guillen is set down. Now, a quick look for this game of the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. What do you like out there, Steve? Joe Creedy has great reactions in the hot corner, Gary. He gets great instincts to be able to move, glove the ball, and a strong, accurate arm. And here's Miguel Cabrera. He has come up hitless 12 career at bats against Burrow. And with two strikes on him now, Cabrera needs to be protective of that zone. Cabrera will foul that one away. Oh. 
towards the middle. And that one's going to drop in. That'll be our first hit of the game. Now a chance now to see where the Tigers sit in the American League. Eighth in home run, 12th in batting average with runners in scoring position. And while the hit numbers, they need to improve right there. The offensive production, not quite what they're looking for. They need to make more contact and put the ball in play. Ground ball up the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. And he'll step on the back. That'll do it. Some good work. Mark Burley works his way out of the first inning without allowing anyone to score. Glad you're with us this afternoon. Some fans bundled up in their jackets. A little chilly. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Leading the MLB in batting average. On the way. He's up for that first pitch and misses 0-1. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Well, it looked like the hitter just gave up on this out of the pitcher's hand, but it's a curveball that comes right down the middle of the plate. Strike three. Quinton on a swing and a miss. He's out. Now we've got a chance to take a look at the slider again. And Beckham's in the box. Only one career at bat. That's a one off Porcello. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. That falls in. First hit of the ball game for this club. And he's in at second with a double. One out. But a good job right there getting on base here with one away. Standing on second base. Now a single will score him. And Alex Rios up. On his last game came so close to hitting for the cycle. Got the home run and the single and double. But unfortunately just couldn't come up with a triple. That's a strike and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Oh, it looked like he was fooled. He wasn't ready for that sinker. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. On pitching like this will keep this game close for a long time. Three pitches early in the ball game, getting it done. Not a lot of wasted energy right there on that sequence. It's going to be Przinski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. He delivers. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Get a little extra giddy up on that one as he just blows it right by him. You're and out. A.J. Przinski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. So Rick Porcello holding it down. Good start for him. It's Rayburn at the plate. He'll get things started here in the home half of the second. Number 25, Bryant Rayburn. Strike one! And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. There's a curveball that bounces to the plate. Here's the delivery. And here's a swing and a miss. He couldn't get that one. One and two. Fastball swung out and missed. Struck him out. One away. A pretty healthy break. 88 mile per hour breaking ball. Two straight fastballs he still couldn't pitch up. So the pitcher comes back with a fastball right after he threw one and gets the K. You know he's throwing gas out there. First pitch, fastball, 0-1. He's just popping that glove with that four-seam fastball, pounding the strike zone. Swing, soft liner towards left center. Makes its way through for a single. Here's a look at the American League wildcard standings brought to you by State Farm. Time running out now for some of these teams. In first place, it's the Yankees. Mariners in second place. In third place, it's the Royals. Orioles fourth. Fifth place, the Rays. And it's the Blue Jays last. I've got such a great race right now for the wild card of the American League. And these teams are going to be playing playoff baseball all the way down to game 162, which has set them up nicely for playoff baseball. This one swung on, hit down the line and right. And it's going to be Quentin. No problem for him. That's an easy out. Coming to bat for the Detroit Tigers. Catcher number eight. It's Jared Laird at the plate. Laird. Two outs and a man on first. Oh. Fouled off. Burley with a delivery. 
Right Swing and a miss, and he's behind on the count 0 and 2. All the pressure on the hitter right now. He knows that he has to protect the plate in order not to strike out. That one's drilled to short, and Ramirez fields the ball. Throws on to first, side is retired. Mark Burley, that's another good inning. He's put in some effective pitching so far. We'll go to the top of the third. We'll be looking to the leadoff batter later on in this inning, another A.B. Bit of sunshine, few clouds floating around. That's uh, the weather-wise situation here today. The pitch. Didn't get around in time. 0-1. On the game last night, he took advantage of a mistake pitch and drove it out of the ballpark for a two-run shot. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Able to set him down there. Chopped that one up as a strikeout. Look here, the hitters are going to have to make an adjustment here. That sinker ball is just dropping off the table right now. They've got to go down and get it, or they're not going to have any chance today. Swing and a miss on a pitch that's in the dirt. Did not look good on that cut. And that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. Well, that's a great pitch right there. That hard sinker. He just can't catch up. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. Let's see what the K-Cam looks like on a sinker ball. And it's Johnny Damon at the plate. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored. Top five. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swings and misses the sinker 0 and 1. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. They had two hits in the game last night, looking to add to that today and trying to contribute to his club success. Well, he was able to ring up that K and he needed it, and it got him out of the inning. What's happening? There's scoreless in Detroit. Number four, Adam Everett. Oh nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. Now Krasinski sets up. Ground ball towards the second baseman. So Everett is retired. It's going to be Inge. Last time up, flew up. Here's the first pitch. Good pitch from Burley swung on and missed. And here's the pitch. Started to go around. That pitch is in there anyway. 0 and 2. And it holds at 0 and 2. Swung on and ripped towards second. And oh, Inge is retired. Nice easy soft round ball to second. Doesn't have any trouble all of that one. And retires in at first pitch. First pitch, A.B. begins to Guillen. Well hit towards the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Guillen. That will bring Miguel Cabrera up. Our State Farm leaderboard, the group of arms who have been lights out over the past 10 games. The White Sox, number one. The Red Sox in second. In the third spot, the A's. Fourth, the Orioles. And at number five, and Cabrera swings, hits it. Damon. And that's the third out. That'll do it. And so out of the inning, only eight pitches thrown. That's pretty efficient. Still nobody on the board here in Detroit. Batters two through four coming right up. The veteran manager Jim Leland, he's hoping for that offense to come alive sooner than later. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez, one of the best batting averages in the league. The deep right center in there, and this is going to be trouble. It rolls all the way to the wall. Ramirez is headed for third. So with nobody out, they get a runner at third. First baseman, number 14, Paul Canerco. 
A lot of times when you think of a triple, you're thinking of runs batted in, one or possibly two. But this time, he's the only guy in base, but he's leading off this inning with that triple and a chance for a big inning. And here's Paul Konerko. He's the league leader in ribbies. First pitch was a strike, 0-1 oh now. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Game. Take a look at the 12 6 curveball in KK. Fantastic piece of pitching to get that out, John. Well, that's the part of pitching you love. He's looking for a fastball, he's expecting a fastball, and then just drop one right off the table. What a pitch. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. And a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one. He's cake. Hey, Gary, he's getting that hard, boring, sinking action on that pitch today. Getting guys to swing over the top. Two strikeouts in a row. And the first pitch. Sinker swung on. Missed 0-1. Well, they've got a couple hits here. And we're into the fourth inning. So they... Maybe they're starting to get something going in the second time through the lineup. Maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. Here it comes. You're Struck out. him out. That's going to be 11 in the game. They get a man to third, but can't bring him home. White Sox still looking for a run. And welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crutch. A smash between short and third, and Creedy gloves out. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position, and they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. It's going to be Santiago now. He's one for one so far. Here's the first pitch. Drill towards the hole. That one threads the needle. That's a base hit. The throw. And he gets there in time. Safe. Well, even though there's two outs, you never want to think you're out of an inning. And this guy came up there and hit this ball hard somewhere. He gets on base with that solid hit. And who knows what can happen after that. And Burley gets it by. Called strike. And the count will go to 0 and 1. Here's the delivery. Back up the middle. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest you on. And Alex Rios to lead off. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. And he starts Rios out. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. The pitch. That's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Time for Rios now to protect. Gary, he's not felt any pressure out there on the mound. The defense has not felt that much pressure either. You know, only one runner left on base, and you know, we're moving through the middle part of this ball game, so you know, they're doing a nice job shutting down this offense. The first pitch. First pitch is a curveball outside, 1 0. He clearly had a shot at hitting for the cycle last time out. Got the triple, which is the toughest. Hit the ball out of the ballpark for a home run. Got a single, but just lacked the double. Couldn't get it done. Here's the 1-1. One -one. And here's a swing and a miss. He couldn't get that one. One and two. Well, he was way behind on that one. Must have been looking for something else. Struck him out. 13 Ks, one game. Well, they went away right there, and he put a pretty good swing on it, but just couldn't quite make contact. Walking back to the dugout now. First pitch to Creedy. Takes a swing, but he's too late on that one. Strike one. Pitch on the way. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Struck him out, and that makes 14 in this game. It goes quickly for Ricky Porcello. One, two, three. He's pushed his strikeout totals. Look at the manager, Isaac Guillen. Plenty on his mind, I think. Plays with the pitching so far, hoping to get some life out of his lineup. 
There's a swing towards the hole. That looks like a single. Here's that race in the Central Division brought to you by State Farm. Season in the home stretch now. First place, the White Sox. In second place, it's the Royals. In third, the Indians. In the fourth spot, it's the Twins. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. This one beyond him. It's going to be extra bases. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. And he scores. Well, tremendous base running. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Well, you see the pitch down in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it and drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep the head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down in the zone. It's a solid piece of hitting. Runner on third with nobody out. And in settles in for the first pitch. Looks like the cutter that time for a called strike. Lifetime numbers 219 off the White Sox. Mark Burley gets that important strike 0 2. Still 0 and 2. Burley with a delivery. Ground ball, Creedy. And Inges retired. For the Detroit Tigers, left fielder. Looking to drive in that run from third. Carlos Guillen with one down. One for two in the ballgame. First pitch, A.B. begins to Guillen. Little fly ball to shallow right. And it falls as Everett comes home to score. And the Detroit Tigers, well, what a momentum swing for them. Number 24, Miguel Now well, the pitcher left this one over the middle part of the plate, right where the hitter can make contact. Good piece of hitting. Boy, with the run scoring there, that's a pretty pretty fat pitch in an RBI situation. Keep the rally going. And it's Miguel Cabrera now. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. This one into the alleyway should be extra bases. That one, a one hopper off the wall. Guillen keeps running. And Guillen comes into school. Stepping up to the plate. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steven, looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And Maglio Ordonez up. And Steve, the offense continues to produce. They keep building on it. You know, after giving up runs like that, this is where the pitcher has to bow his neck and shut down the opponent. Damage control. This is where you uh, begin to wonder whether this game is going to start slipping away or not. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Two away. And that will not get that runner in for third. It's Rayburn at the plate. And the first pitch paints the lower outside corner. Call strike one. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four seamer down and away. Slider locked him up. He's behind 0 and 2. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And it's going to be Quentin. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. Well, you want to talk about breaking out of what was a scoreless game? Well, wow, they did a big three-run inning. Detroit. It's going to be Tomei now. 0 for 1 thus far. First pitch to him. Fastball swung out and missed. 0 and 1. Well, offensively, they just have not been able to get anything going. Only one runner left on base, so they just need more opportunities and see if they can't capitalize on it. Here's the delivery. Liner towards the hole. And out number one as he steps on the base. And it's Johnny Damon now. Right there in the top five in home runs. And Laird sets up his target. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. This one's going to be fielded by Ordonez. Rome's over, puts it away. Coming up for the Tigers in the final stretch of the season. Alexi. We wrap up the Chicago series today. They stay home for another team series, the Baltimore Orioles. That's a three-game series. 
After that, they meet up with Ian Kinsler and the always difficult Rangers. Team that beat them pretty good in the last series. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. That's going to do it here in the sixth inning. It's going to be Santiago now. He'll lead it off. Home half. We're in the sixth. Ramon Santiago. Here's the first pitch. A shot up the middle. Beckham able to pull that one in. Larish at the plate. Lined out last time. Watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike. There's a big swing and a miss. 0 and 2. The hitter has to be protective. He has to be able to fight off that tough pitch and put it in play for a base hit if he can. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching. Number eight. Uh, it seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three and he's gone. Here's the pitch. First pitch of fastball. That's in there for a strike. Really bad pitch right there. It's a ball. Perhaps this one foul to the right. Liner towards the hole, and it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. And not in time, he's safe. And fans, look out for next Tuesday. They'll be at Bush Stadium, the home of the St. Louis Cardinals. They'll face the visiting Chicago Cubs. That one's set for an 8 o'clock start. The first pitch. Here's a check swing, but a call strike, 0-1. Here's the pitch. Oh, looks at a fastball in there, and it's quickly 0-2. Tough spot for the hitter. Down 0-2. You got to protect right now. Good oh! slider that time. Ruled the ball. 1 and 2. That one is hit well. Clinton's there. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. 0 for 2 thus far. Number 14, Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. Shot towards the hole. And Cabrera gloves that one. And you know he's looking ahead and feeling pretty good about it. And with good reason. He hasn't given up a run yet. And he's got to be gaining confidence. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Deep into the ball game, only two hits for this offense. And clearly they've been overmatched, Gary, in this one. And you know, they're going to have to try something. Try to lay down a bunt. Try to see if you can't wait them out. Force them to throw more pitches. But get them out of the ballgame. Hit hard to second. So Quinton is retired. And Beckham's in the box. One for two in the ballgame. Two out. Space is empty. And the first pitch. First pitch. And he misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Line drive. And that's the third out. That'll do it. And Brandon Inge at the plate. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. Johnny faces these Detroit hitters. Main objective? Well, not many guys come out of the bullpen as power pitchers and have the control. That Hit in the air to left center. Damon. That one falls in there for a base hit. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. Batting is Carlos Guillen. First pitch, A.B. begins to gear. The fastball is in there. It's 0-1. Well, they set up down and away. They throw it down and away. That's how hit up the middle. And they'll hold him at first base. What a tremendous catch right there. I mean, what a great effort getting to that ball. Making the catch. Miguel Cabrera. It's Miguel Cabrera. Swings, hits this one in the air down the right field line. And it's going to be Quentin. Now it's two down. 
can't D against a walk. So a look at the pitching stats who haven't hurt themselves, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Royals in second. Third, the Mariners. Fourth spot, Rangers. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Will you ask any manager and any pitching coach in baseball the one thing they really hate to see? Lined up the middle, and that's a base hit. Ordonez on. Well, even though he had two hits in the last game, his team lost. But he keeps swinging the bat like this. Good things are going to happen. It's Rayburn at the plate. Rayburn. Gary, although they have a lead, it still is fairly a close ball game right here. Hot shot towards the hole, fielded by Ramirez. Throw over to second base, a force to retire the side. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. And Alex Rios to lead off. Number 51. And he starts Rios out. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Well, he's really only held him to two hits so far today, Gary. So he's been on top of his game out there. He's made it look easy and. You know, it could possibly be a day the bullpen doesn't have to get used and can get some rest. That's it foul by wow. Rios. How about the catch by the fan in the stands right there? Boy, he just went into his uh, fan crowd there and snagged that baby away. It was a great play. You should have seen it. He had his eyes shut. Got him there. there. That was a nice strikeout. There's a reason why when the catcher puts down the signal for the fastball that he puts down the number one. It's this guy's best pitch and clearly 15 strikeouts later, the other team knows it too. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Well, climbing the ladder on him right there, he just throws that fastball right oh. by him up in the zone. Good eye by A.J. Pierzynski lays off that one, an even count. Swinging a liner to left, and it's in there. That hitting streak continues. He goes right with the pitch and slaps the ball in the left field. And if you try and pull that pitch, you're probably not even going to get the bat on it. It's a ground ball to second base. Now it's Joe Creedy. First pitch to Creedy. Sinker swung on, missed 0 and 1. On the way. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. But once you make the decision to swing, you have got to swing the bat. He waited a little too long. There's a swing and a smash. And Rayburn, as he holds it in, the throw, and at second base, he's tagged out. And he'll head back to the dugout knowing three outs, and he's got himself a shutout. He's got. It's going to be Santiago now. Second baseman, number 39, Ramon Santiago. The pitch. Fastball just misses. 1 and 0. Here's the 1 0. Strike one. Pena evens the count. Look, Gary, that's a great four-seam fastball, but when you lay it down the heart of the plate, you know. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. In time for the up. Larish at the plate, still seeking his first hit of the ball game. One out, nobody on. First pitch. A swing line to left center. That should be a base hit. There's the throw. Not even close with that throw, and he's on it first. The best hitters in the game use the whole field. You have to be able to go the other way. Even when the pitch is over the heart of the plate, that's what he does right there. The guys prolong their career, not with power, but with base hits that are hit that way. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. So Steve, what's he going to be conscious of now as he looks at this Detroit lineup? Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right here, and you know it's about power because of his. There's a ground ball, and he's got it. You're in there. Over to second for one. But he'll yeah. hang on to that, so they will get one. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. First pitch, here it comes. Fastball is downstairs. One ball, no strikes. Pauses and now the 1 0. 
Swings, lines this one back up the middle, and he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. Hardest hit with Coplish in baseball, our state farm leaderboard, the most triples in the league. Oh, a triple is such an exciting play in baseball. Fans love to see guys rounding the bases, cutting the corners, using their speed, diving into the base. And this is a guy that's done it a lot so far this year, and the fans really appreciate it. The pitch. And with two strikes on him, now in, she'll protect the strike zone. Oh. Right on it, but he fouls it straight back. Fastball swung on and missed, side retired. So, no runs, two hits, and they strand two. Tigers three, the White Sox nothing. Jimmy Leland looking on. Great game his club has put together. Things have gone really well. Here's the pitch. Swings a little late that time. Strike one. Now this offense has just been shut down in this one. I mean, they've left one runner on base the entire game. We're in the ninth inning here. They just have not had any real opportunity. Struck him out, and that's one away, and two outs now, away from a shutout. Well, about three innings ago, I was wondering whether or not he'd be able to last into the late stages of this game. I think he answered those questions emphatically. Oh, swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. Oh, well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter, swung late. Drops down a butt. Porcello. In time for the out. Now you're hanging on for one more out. Now he's going to take a little extra time to regroup right now. Throwing a shutout in this day and age is pretty tough because offense usually dominates. Two outs and nobody on. First pitch on the way. Swings at that first delivery. Curveball by him on one. Strike two, Porcello gives himself a little room. This is how you get the routine ground balls. You pound that sinker down and away, trying to get the hitter to roll over his hands and pound it into the ground. Well, it went a great one here today, Jerry, and it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching, really leading them to victory. Now a look back at our Pepsi Clutch performer, Rick Porcello, a young man who continues to impress. But you couldn't have asked for a more dominant display on the mound than what we saw today. He was mixing his pitches well, changing speeds, but the thing you noticed, he didn't throw any pitches over the center of the plate. That's what made it so special. And when he needed it, he could get back and reach back and get that little bit extra when he needed that big out. Made it look easy out there today, Gary. And we got to see a terrific performance out of their starter, and he was able to ride that one on to victory. Well, an outstanding effort. He had everything working today, the good stuff and location to shut down the opponent. Great day for baseball here at 2K Sports. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our great 2K Sports crew. We wish you a great rest of the day or night, wherever you may be in baseball. Right